Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to transform this front yard into a spooky Halloween scene. This year's theme is called Arise and features witches, a spooky cauldron and brew, skeletons, a huge cemetery, and upgraded lighting. I'll tell you the full story of our theme once everything is set up, but for now, let's get started. I got the statement piece for this year's setup at Menards. It's a 10-foot animatronic witch, and she's definitely going to make a splash once everything is set up. For now, I'm trying to get an idea of the size of this piece because I need to build a cauldron that will be to scale. Before I lose my daylight, I need to chop down all of these flowers to make room for my Halloween decor. I also use these flowers in my setup. Day two, I ordered this set of three witches from the Home Depot. They are five and a half feet tall and are very simple to put together. These witches do have battery compartments to light up their eyes, but I'm not going to be using that feature since they will be outside. These are meant for indoor or covered outdoor use, but they will be at the mercy of the elements in this year's setup, so no batteries. But no worries, the giant witch is meant for outdoor use and will pick up the slack with her spooky display. While I'm setting up these witches, let me show you my newest Stitch Fix haul. So I've lost over 33 pounds on the carnivore diet and all of my old clothes do not fit. I have had to donate all of them. So I'm using Stitch Fix to rebuild my fall wardrobe. So I headed over to Stitch Fix and I did their style profile, which is like a short quiz that helps the personal stylists get to know what your tastes are and then I was able to browse tons of different brands and styles. I was amazed at how easy it was to use their website, and I love how they put outfits together for you. I really suck at doing that, and Stitch Fix is going to help me look stylish with no effort on my part. If you'd like to try Stitch Fix out for yourself, head over to the link in the description to get 25% off your first fix. Now, let's get back to those witches. The three witches from Home Depot come with a little cauldron, but it's not big enough for our purposes. After measuring how much room I have, it's time to build a cauldron that can be outside for six weeks without being damaged. I would like to credit the YouTube channel Raising Gentlemen for helping to inspire this cauldron build. I've linked their video in the description. Here's what you'll need. A tape measure, some scissors, chicken wire, this is 4 foot by 25 foot. Be sure to save the wire that is wrapped around the roll of chicken wire, we're going to be using it. 5 yards of black burlap, a 6 pack of black pool noodles, I will link these in the description. And you'll need a glue gun and glue sticks, and 2 foam or wooden rings, I'll show you those in a minute. First, we need to cut two 100 inch lengths of chicken wire. I'm using a pumpkin and firewood to hold the wire down. After cutting the two pieces, I'm going to lay one perpendicular across the other and wire the two pieces together with the wire that was wrapped around the roll of chicken wire. Now it's time to shape the chicken wire into a cauldron. After doing some final measurements and using this round planter stand to hold it down in the center, I put on some gloves and got to work bending and shaping the chicken wire. This is the most tedious part of the build because you're mostly eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect because only one side is going to be visible, but it does need to look like a cauldron. I wire it together where needed, and then bend and roll the chicken wire. Now that I've got the basic shape, I'm going to add the pool noodles to the top to make the lid of the cauldron. This is also going to provide a bit of stability and structure to the cauldron. I cut down the length of one side of the pool noodle and I fit it over the rolled edge of the cauldron. I used two full noodles and a piece of another and then I duct taped the noodles together. Thank you. 
Now I'm taking the cauldron to the garage to measure a piece of quarter inch plywood to use for the base. It's the end of the day and I want to get this witch's dress on and try to get her finished. Now all we have to do is add her head. Back to the cauldron. I hot glued the burlap onto the pool noodles and now I'm gluing it down to the chicken wire. I like to add a bit of glue to the chicken wire itself and then I add a bunch to the burlap. And then I press it into place. It works really well. My niece is wrapping the foam rings with burlap scraps and hot gluing them into place. We're going to attach these rings to the cauldron using some of that scrap wire. And that completes the cauldron build. Now it's time to complete the base of the cauldron. Here is what you'll need. We used 13 cans of spray foam, one to two cans of matte black spray paint, two bags of bones, some small logs, plastic and painter's tape, gloves, two strands of 100 count orange LED lights, and we also used the rest of our black pool noodles. First, we wrapped the bottom of the cauldron in plastic so that the spray foam wouldn't stick to it. Then we cut some pool noodle logs and glued them in place with the spray foam to elevate the cauldron a bit. Then we went to town with the spray foam and covered the entire base with one coat. While the foam is still tacky, I added the two strands of orange lights. Make sure the male end of the cord is sticking out from the base so that you can plug the lights in. Then add some more spray foam over the lights and start placing your logs and bones. Sometimes we used the spray foam to glue the bones in place, and then we let everything dry for a couple of hours. Next, we removed the cauldron and the plastic from the base. Now it's time to spray paint the base with matte black paint. I'm also going to spray paint the cauldron because this burlap looks dark brown, not black. I plugged the base in at this point so we could see how well the lights were shining, and then we added some more spray paint. This is looking great. Now it's time to get all of these skeletons up. I use five foot lengths of rebar to get the skeletons to stand up. We drilled a hole in the pelvis with a half inch drill bit and you just slide the skeleton down onto the rebar. I'll link a video of the entire process on the screen and in the description if you'd like to see how it's done. Now that the skeletons are up, I'm adding the cemetery. A couple years ago, I made some modifications to my gravestones, reinforcing them with quarter inch plywood and adding these flat metal stakes so that they go into the ground more easily. I also have these metal gravestones from the Home Depot. Now it's time for some finishing touches before we light up this scene. I added a few colored floodlights from the Home Depot this year, as well as a few other touches. Let's finish this setup. And now, my 2023 exterior Halloween decor arise. The tall, old crone has returned from the underworld to attempt a ritual. She wants to make All Hallows' Eve last forever. She's enlisted the help of three local witches, and they are at the cemetery, mixing a potent brew in their cauldron. 
They've spent the last few hours raising the dead one by one, and they're finally getting to the culmination of their ritual. As the skeletons dance around the witches, the wind starts to blow, and wolves begin to howl. One of the skeletons rises into the air and is surrounded by an eerie green light. The ritual is complete, eternal darkness spreads over the land, and All Hallows' Eve will last forever. I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a like if you did, and be sure to check out my interior Halloween decor for 2023, I will link it on the screen now if the video is finished. I'm also going to link my exterior decor for 2022. Thanks for watching and happy Halloween! <laughs>